Do you guys remember the old Western movies where the outside guys, the strangers would roll up, they'd open up their cart, and they start selling this cure-all, snake oil? Yeah, me too. But today we got a special, I'm going to be building a special thing for a special person, and that's my wife Mandy. Uh, she's been doing a lot of shows, working really hard on building these herbal tinctures. The difference between snake oils and herbal tinctures is that her stuff actually works. So if you haven't tried it, go check out the website, creatorsofthelostart.com, and have some coming your way because it's all great stuff. So I'm going to make her a snake oil cabinet or apothecary cabinet just to make it easier for her to transport those things around to show people to take it to the, to the sales, to the farmer's markets, and things like that and really help people get aware, help make people aware of the benefits of herbal and natural healing remedies. So it's hot out here, gonna get the fans running. Uh, enjoy it. Started by rough cutting these four quarter poplar boards on the miter saw. And then because these boards had a little bit of a cup in them, I fastened them down to this piece of plywood using cleats so I could shim the corners and they wouldn't rock when I put them through the planer. A few passes through the planer flattened one side, then I could take it off the sled, flip it over, and flatten the other side. Using the joiner sled made quick work of putting a straight, clean edge on each one of these boards. which could then be referenced against the fence to cut the board to width. I squared off one end using a sled and with the help of an extension, because my sled was too short, and a stop block, I cut them all to the same length. Clamping the sides together and using a straight edge ensured that the dado slots I routed would match on each side. The bottom and top got three quarter inch wide dados and the sides got half inch. Then I used these quarter clamps and just a simple butt joint to build the outside of the carcass. For extra strength on the butt joints, I added three quarter inch dowels to each corner. The two middle dividers were clamped together and a half inch dado was routed in them on each side. I added these scrap pieces of wood that were the same depth as the dados so that for the next step, I could route a rabbit around the inside of the back. The scrap pieces prevented the guide bearing from slipping into those dado slots and causing a big gouge in the rabbit. The back is half inch plywood I had left over and I used a pencil to trace out around the rabbit so I could cut to the lines on the table saw. Then I took the opportunity to sand those hard to clean areas before I put the back on. The rabbit leaves a rounded corner so I had to round the corners of the plywood on the belt sander to fit this piece into place. I cleaned up the glue squeeze out on the back with a damp rag and then glued the middle dividers in their place. Next, I started assembling my nine drawers. 
They're made out of half inch poplar with half inch plywood bottoms, held together with glue and brad nails. The dado slots, along with these half inch strips of wood, serve as the drawer slides. I just fastened them with CA glue, held it in place until it dried, and then I was able to pull it out and trim the end. Next were the doors, which were too wide for the miter saw, so I rough cut them with a circular saw. Then silly me forgot to record the part where I added these inch and a half sides and bottom, but I did record adding the dowels for extra strength. Clamps did a great job of holding the door in place so that I could set the hinges. I had to mortise a recess for this vintage skeleton key type lock. It wouldn't keep out a kid, but it does look cool. Then I added display shelves to the inside of each door. and added an opening for the tab of the lock. All of the exterior edges got a 45 degree chamfer. Then everything got a coat of dark brown spray paint. And don't worry, this is not the final look. I measured and added the hardware to each drawer, which included a pool and a little slot where she can add a piece of paper labeling what's inside the drawer. Hundred and twenty grit sandpaper knocked the top coat of the brown paint off, and then I added these little triangle feet that I'd made and forgot to install before I painted. coat of white paint went over the brown and don't worry I'm holding my breath this entire time then sanding in random spots through the white and into the brown gave it a nice distressed look several coats of water-based polyurethane should give it a nice protective finish The last thing to add was two clasps to keep the doors closed during transport. broken pole in the center drawer has already been replaced. Thanks for watching.